right, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 1990 Ford Taurus wagon. Up front is a 3.0 liter V6 and down below is a four speed automatic transmission. Now I am super excited to be driving this Ford Taurus wagon for two reasons. First of all, this is the first generation of Ford Taurus and this is a very monumental car, at least in terms of automotive design back in the 1980s and we'll talk plenty about that later on. But the second reason is that this particular car has been dressed up to mimic and look like the Clark Griswold's wagon from from the movie Christmas Vacation. So it's always fun to be driving a movie car and something so historically important to the Ford brand. But if you would like to submit your own vehicle, you can head on over to my website, zachpradle.com slash submit. It's a quick and easy submission form. It takes under a minute to fill out and I come out to you and you would get a video of your car, just like the one you're watching now of this Ford Taurus wagon. But let's get back to that 3.0 liter V6 under the hood. Well, there were two engines offered in the first gen Taurus at the time. There was a smaller four cylinder and this was the bigger optional V6. There later was a 3.0 eight liter V6 offered, but at the time it was just the four or six cylinder. It offers a really, really nice driving experience. It has that low end torque that a four cylinder of the era just couldn't give you at the time. And around town through neighborhoods on highways, it's nice and I don't have any qualms about it. Now, like I said, Paraduit is a four-speed automatic transmission. This is one of the first Ford products to have a more modern automatic four-speed, although it is still a mechanical automatic transmission which is kind of interesting to note. Last but not least, of course, the Ford Taurus is front wheel drive. And I say, of course, however, that wasn't really the industry standard throughout the 1980s. This sort of made it that. The outgoing LTD that this replaced was actually rear wheel drive. So switching to front was kind of a big deal. So how does it feel to drive a 1990 Ford Taurus wagon? It's actually more luxurious and a lot more forgiving than I thought it was going to be. It rides really, really nice. The V6 has enough power. The automatic transmission is shifting as it should. And overall, it's just a good experience. With that stuff out of the way, let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have a couple of gauges and warning lights. Off to the left is my coolant temperature, along with my oil light, brake light, battery voltage, and some other warnings. In the center, I get the speedometer, of course, marking 55 miles an hour because of the national speed limit. However, by 1990, that was pretty much over with. And off to the right, we have the fuel seatbelt warning light and check engine. On the steering wheel, we do have horn buttons and cruise control, which is nice, but it has a factory driver's airbag. Now this is the only airbag in the car, but for 1990, before it was legally required, that's certainly nice to have. To the left, I do have my headlight switches with parking lights and a climate control vent. And moving out of the door, we have the power mirrors and power windows, as well as power locks down below. Moving into the center, we have our rear defrost button. Button, a little clock, our climate controls. This looks very carried over from the early 80s, but that's okay. Climate control vent off to the right. We have two more climate control vents along with a Taurus badge. And then moving down into the center, we have the factory radio. This is the original 1994 Taurus radio. Love to see that. But then we also have this pull out coin tray. Very, very interesting to see. But then we have a pull out cup holder. So we will do a big friggin' bottle test. And of course it fails. But I love the fact this is the original sticker. It says warning, hard objects in cup holders can injure you in an accident, soft cups only. I have never seen this sticker in a car. Very, very strange to see in any car, let alone a Ford Taurus. We don't have any center console because we can utilize the bench seat. The bench seat is really, really comfortable. Another cornerstone of the Taurus of this generation. These seats are wonderfully comfortable and I am very pleasantly enjoying them. However, speaking of seats, we do have two more rows of seating. So let's go do some back seat reviews. All right, so we're on the back of the 1990 Ford Taurus wagon and a couple of things to note. First of all, Knee room and headroom, oh, okay, actually headroom is good. Knee room, not amazing. I would have expected a little bit more out of this chassis of vehicle, just because this is a little bit bigger than the other cars they were selling. You know, this isn't a Ford Escort, this was a Taurus. And so the rear seat room is 
just lacking a little bit. Is it uncomfortable? No. Is it teeny tiny? No, but it's just less than I thought it was going to be. I'm 5'11", not a small guy, and my knees are hitting the seat in front of me. I do have ashtrays in the doors, still holding on to that 1980s-ness. I don't get a center console, anything like that. I do have my own power windows back here, which is very, very nice, but pretty simple back seat. However, let's hop out. Let's take a quick look at the trunk and cargo space because there's more seating back there. So a couple of things to note before we get into the back. So this is still the two key era. So the big oval key, this is for the trunk, but this slim key was for the ignition. Once we are back here, insert the key to the right pops the glass open and you can open up just the glass, which is absolutely lovely. Love when wagons give you this ability, close that back up, turn it to the left and then the whole trunk comes up. Love that they have that sort of dual opening, dual purpose trunk. Once we are back here, as you can see, tons of space. Love the wagon for that, but we are not done here, ladies and gentlemen. Grab here, open. Then down here, there's a latch. It's hard to do one-handed. There you go. Pull it up, let it click, and there you have the third rear-facing row of the Ford Taurus. Let's see if I can get back here. Uh, uh, all right, all right. Uh. So I'm in the back, I am in the third row of the Ford Taurus facing backwards. And honestly, this might be a little controversial. If it's just me sitting back here, this is comfier than the second row. However, I'm looking around. Um, <laughs> I didn't think this through. There's no interior latch. I'm so used to uh, modern cars having like an interior safety latch. There isn't one for this third row for the rear hatch. So... <laughs> Um, trying to feel down here if I can, oh, I, I think I am trapped back here. I'm not even kidding. I wish that this was a bit. This is not a bit. This is not a joke. Ladies and gentlemen, come on. What am I going to do? Well, whoever had this on their Christmas list or whoever is holding my voodoo doll, please let me out. <laughs> Can I open up? I can't even open up the rear window. All right. Well, this is lovely. Oh. Ah. I'm okay. Ah. Oh. Freedom. Freedom. Oh. At last. Oh my God. Uh, let's talk about the looks. Now we gotta talk about the looks and obviously this car has been dressed up. It was never offered originally with the wood paneling and it was never originally offered in the rose mist metallic from Ford, which this car is painted in. However, the owner found the rose mist metallic to be the closest color to the color featured in the Christmas Vacation movie, as well as they put the wood paneling on for the movie. They dressed it up to make it not look like a Ford Taurus, but it was a Ford Taurus if you go back and watch the movie. Now, I do want to talk about the exterior and why this car was so special, because this car was very radical when it was released in 1986. Pre-1980s, besides like the Thunderbird coupe, cars were boxy. Take a look at this Mercury. Take a look at this Ford LTD that this car replaced. Very, very square, very boxy cars. Well, Ford designed this in the mid 80s as a complete shakeup and they took a gamble in doing so. One of the most radical things is that front end. First of all, it had no upper grill. All of the air cooling happened down below, which was contrary to every car that came before it. The other big advancement was the headlights. These are injection molded headlights. And you might be looking at them and say, Zach, those look old, those don't look interesting at all. But in the era, they were actually very, very advanced because at the time, the National Highway Safety Administration mandated two types of headlights. You could either do rectangular sealed beams or circular sealed beams. 
Every car had them. Take a look at early 80s and late 70s vehicles. They either had rectangular headlights or circular headlights arranged in different fashions, but that's what they were. And so this car, for this car, Ford went to the National Highway Safety Administration and said, look, we want to do injection molded headlights. Are you going to get mad at us for doing that? And the ending verdict was no, go ahead and do it. And so that actually set the tone for modern headlights today. Without the Ford Taurus, we might still have just square and circular headlights on every single one of our vehicles. Now, I assume at some point along the way it would have changed, but the Ford Taurus was the one to do that in 1985 for the 1986 model year. Very, very big deal. And so with that stuff out of the way, let's get on to my final thoughts. What do I think finally driving a first gen Ford Taurus. Well, it's absolutely lovely. It's actually really nice to drive, which I wasn't quite expecting. I've driven a Ford Tempo and I didn't hate it, but I also didn't love it. I'm enjoying this a lot more than that Tempo that I drove, but it's just cool to be driving something that meant so much to the automotive world. This car was designed with a computer, something that hadn't been done much before. This car took aerodynamics into account and wasn't just a block of cheese whittled down slightly. Going back to the 80s, if you want to see where modern car design started, well, you look at the 1986 Ford Taurus. This was the future. And I mentioned it earlier, but Ford took a gamble. Ford did not have a lot of money. The big three were really, really hurting coming off the oil crisis. They had to adapt when other companies like the Japanese didn't have to. They didn't have to change their cars. They were already fuel efficient. Well, the Ford Chrysler and GM had to change. So they spent a lot of money doing so, and there was a lot of failed projects in there. And so Ford was kind of at its wick's end in the early 80s. They didn't have a whole lot of money to play around with, and they hedged their bets on this. And what they ended up creating was the best-selling car in America for several years. They ended up creating something so radical that, yes, it was judged harshly by its competitors, but at the end of the day, they all ended up copying the Ford Taurus. It became the cornerstone. It became the vehicle to be compared to. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to Ted for letting me take out his Ford Taurus all dressed up as the Griswolds machine. Ted has been absolutely wonderful to work with. I've reviewed a bunch of his cars in the past, and when he told me several months ago that he was going to build the Griswolds vehicle, I knew I had to review it here on the channel. Such a down-to-earth guy, and I look forward to working with him much, much more in the future. And if you're watching this on the day of its release, Merry Christmas. And I just wanna say thank you to everyone that has made 2023 such an amazing and special year here on the channel. I have driven and achieved things that I never thought was possible. And so thank you to everyone that made it special. I hope you've had a wonderful holiday season. I hope that you have relaxed. I hope that you've spent time with loved ones, friends, and family. And I very, very much appreciate all the love and support you guys have given me, not only over this year, but over the last eight years I've been doing this. You guys are the best in the world. I can't thank you enough. And so from the bottom of my heart, Merry Christmas, and let's finish 2023 strong. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.